as our day-to-day -day lives, as our physical world, our societies, uh, they're governed by certain etiquettes, by certain politeness, by certain rules of courtesy, which we collectively call as ethics. Similarly, our digital lives, the digital world, the cyber world, which is now ubiquitous, which is now at times even more important than the physical society and the physical world, also has to be governed by a certain set of ethics and certain rules or certain, what I may say, SOPs or standard operating procedures of our online conduct. Uh, if we do not obey or if we do not have a certain set of ethics that we can follow, uh, it will become chaotic, it will be a chaos, it will become like a jungle-like situation where ethics and moralities do not exist. Now, uh, these two terms, you know, digital ethic and online conduct, uh, they emphasize how people should act morally and responsibly while interacting with digital technology and the internet. Now, digital ethics is a very broad term, you know. It includes a certain set of morals. It also includes a certain set of etiquette. It also includes a certain propriety by which we as individuals, and especially when we as individuals are representing organizations, should be acting and behaving. It is a vast topic with various dimensions. Uh, it can range topics including uh, cyber incivility uh, and, uh, and behaviors which go against social norms. Uh, it can uh, you know, include basic things, uh, for instance, basic rules uh, with regards to, let's say, email. You know, do not uh, press reply all when it is not needed. Now, this is a very basic etiquette, but it is important. When we're working in organizations, in our professional life, uh, we're very busy uh, with our work, with our routines. And if we receive unnecessary emails, which were not even meant for us, and they were just sent through a reply all by a certain colleague in the organization, it not just wastes our time, but what it can do is that it can actually prevent certain important emails from reaching out to us. So that's just one example of a digital ethic, uh, which you know uh, we as individuals uh, should ideally uh, implement. Now, the difference between ethic or, or let's say a cyber crime is that just taking this as an example, that you know for, uh, for a random email, if you've repressed reply all, or if you just sent it to everybody in the organization. Now, while this is not technically a cyber crime, but it falls under the category of impoliteness, and it falls under something which can, uh, you know, uh, be just, just be an unnecessary nuisance for your colleagues. Then a second example, for instance, I realize that each one of us receives several emails. However, we need to, you know, form good habits or practices that we are, uh, you know, even uh, for emails uh, which are uh, which are not our top priority agenda we have a certain schedule or we have a, a, a certain uh, you know, time at which we are at least responding to them in a timely manner. And similarly, uh, an example or extension of this is that for instance, if we are on holiday or if we are sick and we cannot reply back emails, it's only politeness that you know, we can put up a message saying that for whatever reason, for a certain number of days, uh, I cannot be expected to be replying an email. Now, this is, uh, this is you know, uh, where I think the distinction between what actually uh, you know, is, is, let's say, cybercrime and what is cyber politeness, uh, is that, that distinction has to be made. This difference has to be uh, valued and realized and implemented. That while you know, these very basic courtesies uh, can, you, can you know, make us uh, digitally, uh, as, somebody, uh, as somebody who possesses ethics, or it can make us digitally courteous, uh, and while, uh, you know, digital discourtesy is not necessarily uh, a cyber crime which is punishable, but a digital discourtesy can not just ruin our image, it can also ruin the image of our organization. Now, two topics that we're also going to briefly look into in the next lectures, uh, and they fall under the scope of digital ethics and proper online conduct include digital hoarding and cyber incivility. Now, these are the two topics which we're going to look at next.